Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. start if someone said to you mark what is the station wagon podcast that show you do with your sister what what would you say our show's all about mindfulness that's too vague specifically yeah okay so you're always right and i'm always wrong okay perfect but more specifically god taking a look at those things that we take for granted giving them up for a while and telling you how it goes so you don't have to do it google us the station wagon podcast or at (laughs) wagonpod.com You are listening to Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. Ba-bam! 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 I'm I'm Kenyon. I'm Lucy. (laughs) And I'm Amanda. And this week, we decided to kind of lighten things up a bit because Stockholm Syndrome <laughs> was to. real dark. Um, it's dark in that box. Fucking head in a box. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was a good dark one, I thought. So we decided to uh, try something a little bit lighter, a little bit new. And so this week, we will be discussing Beyond Stupid Thieves. Yes, this was so fun to research. Or just <laughs> also, yeah. Amanda has been trying to get us to do this topic since we launched. <laughs> yes, I wanted to like open with stupid criminals. <laughs> really like, glad oh, necrophilia we didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> necrophilia wins out again. Yeah. Also, I feel like it's important for me to mention that I have a pork loin marinating right now, and <laughs> while I was preparing it, I could not get long pig out of my head. Oh, it's I have not basically haven't had pork since that episode. Do not touch uncooked pork Mm -mm. while thinking of long pig. It's not, I don't recommend it. Also, while drunk at a bar the other night, I described in detail to a stranger about how (laughs) pork and human meat are both white meat, or both red meat, but appear white because of the myelin. Myelin. (laughs) Ah, He was just like, "Uh uh-huh. (laughs) Uh-huh. You have a habit of describing in length certain things to strangers that yeah. they probably don't want to hear. My mommy Quartering wipes me this strangers. way and this and way. And this way. Now let yep. me talk to you about this Russian guy who mummified <laughs> dolls and kept them in his apartment. <laughs> Do you have an hour to hear Chicken about our Lord and Savior Anatoly Movskin? <laughs> The thing is, I don't care because I'm not looking for any new friends or new romantic <laughs> relationships. So I Good, have just cause... got nothing to lose. Or just You're approval from approval from society <laughs> right. in general. Yeah, I'm I'm free as a bird here to discuss violin and mummified <sighs> dolls. <laughs> and a man going about his morning routine with half of his head missing. Yeah. Oh. Great Cold stories. Face. People should be fucking grateful. I think people are. <laughs> We've seen that from the success of this show. Oh, yeah. Our listeners so. are friggin' amazing, and they get it. Oh, um, they get still it. forget, though, you that we have it. listeners, and we're not just on the phone with each other not recording this. Yeah, sometimes thinking we're funny. I don't want to think about it. My hands get too sweaty. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, beyond, <laughs> beyond Stupid Thieves, Amanda, what is our wine crime pairing? Well, to keep it light, just like the topic, I went with the Big House Pinot Grigio. (laughs) Yeah. Because stupid criminals pretty much always end up in jail in the Big House. In the the Big House. (laughs) (laughs) So, big thanks to the folks at France 44 Liquor for helping me find this pairing. Oh, that's a great liquor store. Oh, it was so good. And they're used to dealing with, you know, the sort of hoity-toity clientele of Linden Hills. So, I think they were almost like disturbingly enthusiastic when I was explaining (laughs) what I needed. (laughs) So I'll definitely be going back to them. Um, And I know that we've talked about Pinot Grigio before, but I'm going to try to talk about a couple different things regarding this varietal. Um, This particular Pinot Grigio, it's a California wine. 
and it is a citrusy wine on the nose with like kind of a nice soft light palate. You're going to get a lot of grapefruit and honeydew melon out of this. So a super drinkable summer wine that's not too sweet. Mm. Um, as we know from the last time we covered Pinot Grigio, this grape grows best in cool climates and matures relatively early with high sugar levels. And this can lead to either a sweeter wine or... If it's fermented to dryness, it's going to be a wine that is high in alcohol. Nice. This one that we're drinking is 13.0 ABV, so that's pretty pretty big for a white, which is kind of cool. So mm -hmm. I can expect this one to be a little bit on the drier side. Nice. Um, and again, like I said, since we've kind of talked about this varietal, I thought it would be kind of interesting to talk a tiny bit about aging. Most Pinot Grigio is not aged in oaks, like Chardonnay is. Um, the barrels that Pinot Grigios are aged in are typically stainless steel. And mm. since stainless steel is a neutral metal, it, ref um, it maintains the natural flavor of the wine. So you don't, like, taste or smell any woody notes on the wine. It mm. doesn't change how the finish is going to be. It just kind of preserves... The how actual the grape wine itself, yep, mm -hmm. is gonna taste. So is that is most cool. whites, or is that specifically Pinot Grigios? Um, I think it really depends on the varietal. A lot of white wines are aged in oak, but if you get into some of these more crisp wines, mm -hmm. like your Pinot Grigios, um, Sauvignon one Blanc, really probably. I, I yeah, I'm pretty sure Sauv Blanc is. You're not gonna see Sauv Blanc oaked. Mm -hmm. Those more like delicate flavors because you don't want butteriness like they want to maintain some fruity kind of citrusy mm -hmm. albarinos you want to keep them like nice and bright and nice and fresh mm -hmm. um so yeah pinot grigio would fall into that category and a lot of people do prefer this type of finish and flavor um i think that's probably part of the reason some people really don't like chardonnays because it has a very distinct like oak aging characteristic uh -huh. yeah that's but exactly grigio, why i don't like it Exactly. Pinot Grigio is nice and clean. It's crisp. It's fruity. It's light. Um, the wine just becomes more fruit forward and less tannic when it's aged in stainless steel. Fancy. So that is what I've got. All right. And big house. we have another twist off oh, with the big house. Oh, going to have a nice crack this week. Stupid criminals can't operate a wine key. That's so, so I guess. true. No corks. <laughs> no corks for All the right. stupid thieves. Let's give it a twist. Oh, oh, nice crack. Nice crack. Mm. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers. Also, I'm in oh. America this week, everybody. That's right. What up? Double cheers. Getting ready for that live show in two weeks. Oh, my God. It'll be one week after this airs, or a little bit less even, right, Matt? Yep. A little, yep. little more than one week. A little more. A week yep. and three days, right? Yeah. Yep. Yup. 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 And all this math adds up. Woohoo! And the Minneapolis live show is sold out. So thank Completely you all so much. Completely sold out as of yesterday. And mm -hmm. we can't wait to see all of you that are able to make it out. And um, yeah. And it's my back. birthday. And it's Lucy's thirtieth goddamn birthday. And don't it's her fucking birthday. forget it. We're gonna have <laughs> we're gonna have time uh, before the show starts to kind of meet and greet everybody. So we're really looking forward to that. And yeah. open my gifts. <laughs> and open my and gift. lavish Good presents God. upon Lucy. Yeah. I'm not going to let sure, sure, anyone sure, sure. forget that it's also my fucking birthday. Because it's <laughs> an important birthday. It's we the big 3-0. It's mm -hmm. my darty. Darty, darty. You darty, darty. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. 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 All right. Lighty. All right. Darty, darty. Um. Bam. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> listeners, ba bam is our new thing. So, mm -hmm. because we said it once tonight before recording and laughed our asses off for no reason, and now we're not going to stop. <laughs> it saying. just stuck, and we're not Welcome willing to, to let to it being go. Friends with us, we're those people. <laughs> ba bam. All right, almost birthday girl. Give us background and <sighs> in psych into stupid thieves. Take it. The last precious few hours of my twenties. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this morning, my morning poop, I was obviously <laughs> scrolling Facebook, as I do. If you ever get a message from me, you're goddamn guaranteed I'm on the toilet. Oh, same oh, <laughs> Amanda's oh. on the toilet right now. <laughs> no, because the acoustics in my bathroom are not good. I've already checked. Oh. <laughs> if I could record from the toilet, you best fucking believe I would, but I can't. Or the tub. Both. Um, okay, so there's 
I saw this video of this criminal who's like somewhere in like, I don't know, rural England. Mm -hmm. They're in England, so their accents are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's this guy who came outside to, like, I don't know, take his trash out, and there's this man who tried, evidently tried to hop his fence, like his gate, to his backyard, (laughs) and he got stuck, and he was there for, like, an undetermined amount of time. (laughs) But, like, so imagine trying to climb up and over, like, an eight-foot like Oof. fence with oh. like a gate fence no. and so like he's uh-uh. like his shoulders and like his head are over the top and his arms are like <laughs> over the top of it but like that's the point when you like swing one leg up and over mm-hmm. and somehow he got stuck like that so okay. his legs are at like a 90 degree angle and he's just Ow. dangling there oh no probably for hours oh well, that'd be Awful. He's, he said it was just for a couple minutes, but it was uh-huh. probably, it feels I mean, like uh-huh. hours. the guy's sure. recording it in the light of day. I'm assuming the guy tried to break in when it was dark, so he felt <laughs> that he's just begging the dude to help him. Yeah, the best punishment Perfect. would just be to leave him there. I, d- yeah. I didn't finish the video because it was kind of long and I was done, she was done in the pooping. bathroom. I was done pooping. <laughs> so, but the guy's like, mm-hmm. the guy's like, please. Please help me. Please, sir. Please, sir. Untangle my jeans. (laughs) And the guy's like, uh, Mildred, Uh, come out here and see what we caught. (laughs) Good God. It's a clean trap or whatever they're called. (laughs) (laughs) What are they called? I don't know. No I don't kill. know what you're referring to. No kill. Oh, oh. A no kill. Yeah, live trap. A live trap. <laughs> For but humans. He's so it. pathetic. So anyway, I thought that was uh, appropriate. Yep. Fantastic. Good, good background in psych. No, that's not <laughs> it. Yeah, okay. I have so much more. First case. <laughs> <laughs> so when I first. When we first started talking about this topic, I my first reaction, especially after seeing that video and, like, laughing, was why we enjoy and why we chose this topic and why the listeners are enjoying this at this moment. Why do we like laughing at stupid people? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's schadenfreude, which is also, like, my life essence, <laughs> which yep. is yep. deriving I'm... pleasure from other people's misfortune. Okay. And a really good song on the Avenue Q soundtrack. Oh. I have pretty much been pretending to know what that word meant my entire life. Mm. So I'm well, really looking now forward you know. to this deep dive. Well, I can't believe you of all people don't know what Schadenfreude is. Because I, it's what I do. Because the three of us <laughs> live it. I mean, this that's what this show is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's just the it's the byline of our show. This is unbelievable. Okay, take it away. I'm so So, there is no deep dive, and I really just did define it. Kenyon wasn't listening. Schadenfreude is Mm -hmm. deriving pleasure from other people's misfortune. (laughs) Yeah. So, basically, when we watch, when we hear these stories and we watch these videos, we're just, like, feeding our own vanity, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm so much smarter than that. Look at him. Let's laugh at him. And just reveling in the fact that it wasn't you. Yeah, it didn't Basically. happen to you. Okay. Basically. Exactly. Um, so that's kind of the hit a brick wall there. But I kind of got into, like, how criminals generally have a lower IQ than the general population. Mm. And, and one theory, which I thought was interesting, is that intrapersonal crimes, so, like, crimes between two people, like, personally, such as assault murder, robbery, and rape Mm -hmm. are, they're very base urges that males utilized, like, way back when, uh, utilized to compete with each other in the, quote, ancestral environment. Okay. Hmm. Um, They were competing for mating opportunities, resources, food, etc. And these behaviors are actually really common in other species, particularly primates that scientists have observed, but lots of other species. But it's really only modern civilization and laws that make it criminal, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, put an order to it and say, that's wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So the institutions and technologies that control and monitor and capture these criminals are only products of modern society, like cameras and DNA and forensics, fingerprints, mm -hmm. and, like, the courts and laws themselves. Okay. So... So any, any like, holding these people accountable or tracing that it's them? Mm -hmm. Any, any third-party consequences... Is ba is a pretty modern a modern day notion. concept, really. Yeah, exactly. It's not like old school times when you would just deal with thieves and pillagers yourself by basically like fighting back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and even like even back then, pretty much the only third party intervention or punishment would be like either retaliation for whatever reason or ostracizing from the community. But with interpersonal things like rape and robbery, it was sort of just if the second party doesn't retaliate, then there's no, like, societal punishment. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, well, therefore, it stands to reason that men, let's be honest, it's men, yeah. with, with low IQs are more likely to resort to this basic evolutionary means of competition for resources, and they are also... Uh, likely to not fully comprehend the consequences. Okay. That's definitely so that my guy. Oh, one of them. So some psychological characteristics associated with criminals are childhood conduct disorder, which I think is just a nice way of saying your kid's a fucking brat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a adult antisocial personality disorder, which those two are related ADHD, depression, schizophrenia, low reading development, and learning disabilities. Okay. And so some personality traits include impulsiveness, sensation-seeking, and low self-control, low empathy, and low altruism. So basically just being an asshole. Well, just being mm. selfish and impulsive and, yeah, just living an in asshole. the moment. Yeah. Right. Not thinking about how your actions impact others. Exactly. Yeah. So there are also, obviously, no surprise, some socioeconomic factors like low income, a uh, few years of education, and a higher uh, living in an area of a higher rate of poverty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a World Bank study says that crime rates and inequality are positively correlated with within countries and between countries. Um, and reflects causation from inequality to crime rates, even after controlling for other crime determinants. So, mm -hmm. basically, if you're in an area with a lot of inequality, you are far more likely to develop criminal behaviors. Which is probably okay. why urban areas have higher crime rates as well. Because, exactly. Yep. Yeah, the inequality there is just so much more pronounced than in a rural area. Mm -hmm. And also, I thought it was interesting that there were some geographic indicators if you're more prone to criminality. So, so some studies have shown that associated factors include areas with uh, large population size, so like you said, bigger cities, mm -hmm. um, related to neighborhood quality, residential mobility, tavern and alcohol density, duh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gambling and tourist density, uh, your proximity to the equator, hmm. so that uh, has to do with temperature and, like, seasons. And um, also, we're basically just describing Florida, so <laughs> yeah. for all those Yikes. dumb criminals that come out of Florida, we have scientific <laughs> measures about that. None of mine came out of Florida, shockingly. Mine is not out of Florida either, but that is exactly, we're just describing Florida. It was yeah, yeah. we're going to do an entire Florida episode yeah. at so, some point. So, large population, <laughs> lots, of, lots of bars and alcohol, lots of tourists, Sheet. and you're closer to the equator. It's amazing. Yep. So. <laughs> Peninsula-shaped boundaries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phallic-shaped states. Alligators. <laughs> <laughs> Keys. <laughs> really good episodes of Cops. Po possibly my biological father. Oh my Maybe. God. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh my God. God. Dad, okay. are you listening? Pay for my wedding. Dad, do you have Daddy? money? <laughs> father, can you hear me? 
Papa, do you care? Oh, Papa. <laughs> Papa, don't preach. Just send no. money. Papa, yeah, I have a podcast. <laughs> Are you coming to the okay. live show? Papa, no, don't he's sue not. me. <laughs> Okay, so that was the pretty much maxed out the psychology that I have. So basically, low IQ equals higher risk of criminal behaviors, which Mm -hmm. shouldn't surprise anyone. So I also (laughs) found a list of just brief little paragraph descriptions of stupid criminals on Reader's Digest website, which I love Reader's Digest. Oh my gosh. Because you're 80. (laughs) I know. And because you also read obituaries. They don't have obituaries in Reader's Digest. I we didn't, didn't say you say read that. them in Reader's Digest. <laughs> <laughs> but we do know that you clip out the good ones from your local paper. I do. To keep. I know. Or mail to my mom. Yeah. yeah. We know. Because she, too, I, lives off of schadenfreude. Mm. I wish, I just want to do a PSA where it's like, can you tell us, what actually went down in the obituary for your loved ones. Like, none of this right. died peacefully at home. Like, right, no, I, I want to know, know. How much blood was there <laughs> and who killed whom. I, I love like, the obituaries when they're the like... Details. When they're like, she left behind a no good stepson. <laughs> like... Just I want to airs all the dirty laundry in an obituary. Those are my uh, favorites. They're the best. Um, okay, so back to Reader's Digest. So I have yeah. a handful of short descriptions of <laughs> dumb criminals. So, Love it. Uh, you might be a stupid criminal if you believe flattery will get you anywhere. Aiden Juarez Ramirez had it all figured out. He could be a cop without having to take the boring test. But he was arrested in Grapevine, Texas after pulling over a driver in his pickup truck outfitted with flashing lights. (laughs) He even had an ID badge, which he had made himself by blacking out a restaurant gift card and etching in in the word police. (laughs) However, he'd kept the restaurant's logo, which was a jalapeno (laughs) pepper, surrounded by the words Chipotle Mexican Grill. (laughs) Chipotle is not a restaurant. No. Oh my god, <laughs> yes. Oh. You might be a dumb criminal if you vastly overrate your powers of persuasion. Marlon Moore of Miami, Florida, oh. filed a, I love this one, filed a fraudulent tax return and the IRS promptly sent him a check for $10,000 or a $10,000 refund. Nice. So figuring, why not try my luck again? Uh-oh. He sent in three more tax returns. In but the, the same year? But <laughs> even the IRS raised an eyebrow at cutting him a check for the total amount of the refunds, which was more than $14 trillion. <laughs> 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 he pled guilty to cashing the $10,000 check. <laughs> I love this episode. You might be a dumb criminal if you leave a paper trail. Hickory, North Carolina cops were able to solve in record time the mystery of the two cash registered purloined from the Captain's Galley restaurant. Purloined. I love the word purloined. Gird your purloins. (laughs) Their big break came when they discovered a trail of white register tape. They followed it 50 yards to an apartment where they say a man named Donnie Guy was cracking the registers open. Donnie Stubbs. Are you talking about, like, the the thermal receipt paper? Yeah, he left a (laughs) literal paper trail. (laughs) (laughs) You might be a dumb criminal if you just love too much. So maybe okay. Stefan Bennett should try online dating. After he and two accomplices allegedly mugged a couple in Columbus, Ohio, police say he found the woman's ID in her purse, then showed up at her door with a simple proposal. How about a date? Since a girl likes the, likes to play hard to get, she called the cops who arrested Bennett outside her home. So he just <laughs> Fuck that. thought so she he was stole cute. Her wallet, thought she was cute, went to her house. Yeah. With her ID and asked her on a date. Right. 
That's a way to get a lady. Actually, I've, I've had worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other episode. Oh, my God. Ken- Kenyon's ex-boyfriends are their own episode. <laughs> they are. Oh, my God. Oh, All this right. is great. You might, be a, you might be a dumb criminal if you skimp on travel expenses... Twelve Middle Eastern immigrants forgot the first rule of sneaking into a country. Don't call attention to yourself. Mm. En, route, en route to England from Germany, they snuck a ride in the back of a man's truck. They stayed quiet throughout their trip, even as they crossed the channel into England, but once they hit Dover, they celebrated their arrival with songs and whoops. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that Not would be for us. long, though. That would the, be us. That would the totally be us. <laughs> that, that would definitely be us. But bam <laughs> oh, ba bam! We're in we Germany. Made it. Yeah, ba bam! <laughs> Not for long, though. The startled driver headed to a police station <laughs> where the twelve were apprehended. <laughs> okay, you might be a dumb criminal if you're convinced the laws of physics don't apply to you. Yes. Clive Halfert thinks big. Great the British name. career. What? Great name. Clive Halfert. <laughs> The British career criminal stole a truck and loaded it with 18 pallets of stolen nickel and copper worth about $250,000. Whoa. Yes, the haul was huge, too huge. Cops arrested <laughs> Halford after the truck's suspension collapsed under the weight. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, Halford had stolen a car, overloaded it, and broken its suspension, too. So this oh, was what? the second time he tried to steal too much. Oh, no. Halford. Yes. Come Fucking on, Oh, man. yes. Is Fucking Clive. Make two Ooh. trips. No. <laughs> Make two trips. No. All right, you might be a dumb criminal if you text and rob. Nicholas Greenlee dropped his cell phone near where an 84-year-old woman had had her purse snatched in Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Cops suspected that he might be involved in the crime when they read the phone's last outgoing text message, which was, (laughs) I am ready to grab some old lady's purse. (laughs) Coincidence. Pure coincidence. First Amendment rights. Yeah, circumstantial <laughs> evidence. At circumstantial. Best. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. You might be oh a dumb god. criminal if you take the holidays too seriously. Uh, Robert E. Dendy of upstate New York presented the local police station with a Christmas wreath. Since oh, the no. officers were well acquainted with Dendy, they did some <laughs> snooping and arrested him for stealing the wreath from a store down the block. <laughs> And he's broke, okay? <laughs> I choked on wine. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, this one's even worse. You might be a dumb criminal if you air your neighbor's dirty laundry. Oh, As no. she walked around her neighbor's yard sale in Severn, Maryland, the woman couldn't help but admire the items the oriental rug, the luggage, the shoes. <laughs> they were exactly her style, and why not? They were hers, as was everything else on display. David Perdicone says somebody sold him the stuff, but the cops think Perdicone did the deed himself. So, like, stole the neighbor's the stuff and then sold it in the, the garage. Sale. Stolen. <laughs> yeah. That is cold. Uh. And ballsy. You might be a dumb criminal if you harbor grudges. Joseph Getz's alleged attempt to rob a York, Pennsylvania bank met with some snags. Cops say the first teller he tried to rob fainted, and the next two, and the next two insisted they had no cash in their drawers. Fed up, Getz stormed out, threatening to write an angry letter to the bank. <laughs> How dare you not let me rob you successfully? I want to speak to your manager. Okay, oh and this one is totally fitting. This is the last one. All right, you might be a dumb criminal if you leave a far too indelible impression. Victims oh, no. of a home robbery in Riverview, Florida, mm-hmm. e- easily picked out Sean Roberts from police photos. Turns out there aren't too many other people with a map of Florida tattooed on their <gasps> face. <laughs> But he is pleading not guilty. I think we should 
should do a face tattoo criminal episode. <laughs> oh my god. I love face tattoos oh, so much. So bad. Oh my god. Uh, of Florida. Okay. I once met a guy who had a detailed he was like, okay, this makes it better. He was a tour guide in Budapest, Hungary. Okay. <laughs> Hungarian guy. He had this Hyper detailed, massive arm tat, like bicep tat of Alan Iverson's face. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it was the craziest thing I've That's ever seen. That's amazing. In my oh my life. god. <laughs> I love it. He was a tour guide at like the Buddha Castle. He was like teaching <laughs> archery and like old timey tights. And then he just had an Alan Iverson (laughs) tag. That's amazing. (sighs) Some people belong in Florida. Well, that does it for me for kind of psych and sort of background and just a roundup of dumb criminals. (laughs) All right. Mine isn't that different, to be honest. I have one really short story and then one a little bit more in-depth story. So, Mm -hmm. The short one takes place in Laverton, Western Australia. Laverton, Laverton, Mm -hmm. whatever. We'll be Uh, corrected, don't worry. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Our four Australian listeners. Um, They're very active, though, those four. They are. They Uh, are. We love them. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so a couple of thieves noticed a bus parked uh, outside, like a sort of like a campground. And they saw an opportunity. So their plan was to siphon fuel from the bus's gas tank in the night. (laughs) And then resell it to make money, right? So they they brought all their, like, gas cans, empty gas cans with them. And they have to, like, suck it up through their mouths. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. That's gross. I only know that from The Simpsons. (laughs) That will factor in. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so you don't have to suck it, obviously, the entire time, but you have to suck it to, like, get, it, to get it started. started. Yeah. yeah. The fumes, you're sucking that down. Right. So, mm-hmm. the local police sergeant the next day told reporters that the thieves got a little more than they bargained for. Oh, no. <laughs> no. So... <laughs> When uh, the people who own the bus called the police in the next morning, like, seeing that, like, something was amiss, the police came and found the fuel tank was untouched, but the discarded cap to the bus's sewage tank <laughs> was, discard- <laughs> was discarded <laughs> on the ground with no. teeth marks on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> teeth? try to get the fuel anymore. That is amazing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my they god. really it's misjudged so their opportunity. Ooh. <laughs> 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 oh my god. That was so good. Okay. They did okay. a shitty job stealing that gasoline. <laughs> what a crappy day. <laughs> case still not nearly as in depth as most of my cases tend to be mm-hmm. um i mean how 
could you really get that in depth right. with this topic? I struggle. Right. Okay, so on August 10th, 2007, a man in Ashland, Kentucky, so the Deep South, as according to <laughs> Amanda. <laughs> the super, super Deep South. <laughs> super Deep South. Um, walked into Shamrock Liquors intending to rob the store. Okay. The store manager, however, had a hard time taking the robber seriously, which might have been due to his brilliant disguise. Oh, yes. <laughs> the thief had wrapped his entire face and head in duct tape. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. He yep. does not have eyebrows or yep, eyelashes yep. anymore. There will oh. be there will be photos on the blog, so go take <laughs> a look. Yes, yes. this guy yes. is amazing. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. So the duct tape bandit, as the press <laughs> soon gleefully <laughs> called him. <laughs> oh my god, I'm seeing these photos. What the fuck? He's amazing. He was chased out of the <laughs> store by the manager who was wielding a wooden club, which also prominently featured duct tape on the club. Um, <laughs> and then the guy was tackled and held in a chokehold in the parking lot by another employee until police arrived. Okay. So I'm police. sorry. Is this man's <laughs> named Casey Casey? Yes. I'm about to get there. I'm sorry. Oh. I ruined it for you. I'm looking at the photos. <laughs> so, so the police arrest him in the parking lot, bloody and covered in duct tape. Covered in duct tape. <laughs> he has like a split lip through yeah, his he duct looks tape mask. Insane. And he, he looks had... like a drunk guy on Halloween. Yeah. It's like a bad mummy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had hair, but like he was not like he was bald. Like, what was he anyway? So the man, 24-year-old... covering the top of his head. It's his whole head. It's his whole head with just the eyes out and, like, one eyebrow out and lips. <laughs> it's amazing. But the I eye that's, it. like, less taped up is, like, taped so that it's kind of forcing his eye closed. <laughs> yeah, it's a really messy duct tape mask yeah. job. He did this quickly himself without a mirror. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my okay, God. so the man, 24-year-old Casey G. Casey. <laughs> Casey K. Casey K. Casey Crazy Casey. Crazy Casey. Crazy Casey. <laughs> ba bam ba bam Claimed oh, ba -bam. that he had no recollection of ever going to Shamrock Liquors. And oh, pled, how convenient. Pled not guilty. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. To, okay. <laughs> to the first degree robbery Ooh. charges. He was apprehended at the scene covered in a duct tape mask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I didn't do it. Direct quote to reporters, and there is video of this, and in a moment I will direct you to it. But direct quote to reporters while crouching down and doing double peace signs with his hands. Yes. <laughs> he said, yes. look at me. Do I look like a duct tape bandit? I'm not no duct tape bandit, baby. Do the math. Do the homework. <laughs> oh, yes. my God. Is he like okay. an aspiring rapper? Uh, it doesn't say, but there is a rap remix. So please yes. play the video. Let's hit play oh my at the God. same time. Look at me. So I look like a duct tape bandit, baby. Tape bandit, baby. Tape bandit, baby. Tape bandit. Do the math, do the homework, man. You know this is not me. Duct tape? I'm not no duct tape bandit. You hear me? I'm not no duct tape bandit. I'm not no duct tape bandit. You hear me? I'm not no duct tape bandit. Now look, live one on one, ass in the tucky. You know this is not me. Now look, so I look like a duct tape bandit, baby. Jesus. So I'm not no duct tape bandit. You hear me? I'm, I'm not, not no duct tape bandit. bandit. I'm, I'm not, not no duct tape, tape bandit. bandit. You hear me? I'm not no duct tape bandit. Now look, do the math, do the homework. Now look, police agency did this to himself, wrapping his head in duct tape to conceal his face. Now look, 
I mean, he probably had every, every, every opportunity to put a brown paper no poke over his head and poke holes in it for a plastic bag, <laughs> you know? But duct tape. Now look, you know this is not me. Fortunately, Steele had his own duct tape attached to a wooden club. Oh. I'm not no duct tape bandit, you hear me? I'm not no duct tape You're bandit. Mad the homework. I'm not no duct tape bandit, you hear me? I'm That's not no duct me. tape bandit. Duct tape? Now look, duct he says tape? police have the wrong man. Despite no duct tape bandit. That might suggest not duct no duct tape bandit. I'm into it. I like it. Isn't it kind of good? I will jog to this. <laughs> you and know. I've never jogged to anything in my life. <laughs> I just love it. I love it so much. Oh my god, I want this like single. <laughs> I'm not no duct this tape is our, bandit. This is our new theme me? song. <laughs> and I love the guy going duct tape. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of um oh my god, what was that guy who rapped in high Casper. school? Casper. Casper. I hate you, Dad. <laughs> I L O V E Y O U. <laughs> hey, we do remember his lyrics all these years later, so That's maybe he wasn't true. that bad. That I liked success. it. Oh my god! Okay, so Casey K Casey Casey uh, pleads not guilty to the charges. Do the math. Do the homework. Do the, uh, the homework. <laughs> duct tape. Duct tape. <laughs> duct tape. Bill, <laughs> ba- duct tape. Uh, Bill, <laughs> Bill was set at $250,000, and then he was later convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison, but he got out on parole a few years early. Okay. 10 years? Well, it was... Oh, was it armed robbery? Yeah, I don't know if he and was... And aggravated assault, right? Yeah, yeah. He tried to uh. hit up a liquor store, so I... Ten years. I'm sure he probably had some priors. Mm, okay. Um, okay. The bad tape job got him, like, an additional eight. They were like, we, you just... You need some time to think about what you've done. Yeah, come on, <laughs> you bud. You really need to time out. <laughs> we're doing this for you. Go sit on the stairs. <laughs> Go to the corner. <laughs> okay. okay, so when Bill Steele, the heroic store manager, spoke to reporters, so the guy who chased him out with a club, uh-huh. uh, he said he was flabbergasted. Quote, I mean, he probably had every opportunity to put a brown paper bag over his head and put holes Seriously. in it. You know? Seriously. But, but, It'd be cheaper and less <laughs> painful. But duct tape? That's a direct direct quote. Can you imagine, like, the cop that had the honor of ripping that shit off of that dude's face while he's handcuffed? Oh, that had to have hurt so bad. They must must have cut it off with scissors. They had to have. I don't know. Find the end. Spin him around a couple times. (laughs) I don't know. I'm not no duct tape bandit. You heard? (laughs) Duct tape. Duct tape. (laughs) Duct tape. Um, Okay, so... One of the best parts to me is that it doesn't even really do that good of a job at concealing his face. Like, you mm. can definitely tell who the fuck this guy is. Oh, uh, easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Like, it, uh, uh, you could, I don't roll of, a roll of duct tape was probably like, what, 250? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get a fucking bag or like a, bag a is cheaper. ball of clava. It's not Baklava? even. Baklava? I get those mixed <laughs> ba- up. Baklava. <laughs> A baklava. I'm so hungry. Cover your face in sweet, sweet baklava. (laughs) (laughs) That would literally have done a better job. Yes. Yeah. A thousand percent. (laughs) So fortunately for Casey, he was sweating so much uh, that the duct tape didn't adhere as tightly as you might imagine (laughs) to his Mm -hmm. face. (laughs) So, So he did not need treatment at the hospital. Oh yep. my god, yep. that is so <laughs> All right. He was sweat. I can see him like psyching himself up like yeah. right outside the liquor yeah. store, like, mm, I'm gonna yeah. do this. Yeah, you definitely wrap it up, like wrap the M and M eight mile, because that's what this yes. guy is. Like this guy yeah. is spaghetti. That. Yeah. But not talented yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, he... so <laughs> shockingly, in twenty fifteen, the duct tape bandit struck again. Oh, um, no. The same guy? 
same guy, not with duct tape this time. He was Electrical oh, tape, God. gaffer's tape, <laughs> pa- painter's tape, backing tape. <laughs> painter's tape, it just fell off his face the moment he s- stood up. <laughs> It's just clear. <laughs> it's clear packing tape. Oh, that's even more painful, maybe. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. Okay, so this guy is out of prison, still on parole for his duct tape fiasco. Oh, honey. And oh, honey. He Casey K. K. Casey KZ. Come on, bud. You, Casey you were, K-som. <laughs> you were meant to be a radio DJ. American okay. Top 40. <laughs> he should have used masking tape. Oh. oh. <laughs> God, your puns are just on point tonight. I know. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> My bad puns are on point. Right. Give okay, me that, that's at accurate. least. Um, ba-bam. Okay, so oh, ba-bam. <laughs> he was caught in an attempted mugging also in the same town and... Uh, <laughs> The police definitely recognized him, and he was sentenced to 12 more years in prison because it was, My a, God. It was a violent offense and a parole violation. So they what sent his on. ass back to prison. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, um, my God. Okay, so that case is great, but, like, while I'm researching the duct tape bandit case, I was shocked to find out that there were a several copycats. <laughs> what the fuck? Why? Yeah. Get a bag. Why? Get some baklava, for Christ's sake. <laughs> the baklava. Literally anything else. Cover your face in Middle Eastern pastries, for God's sakes. <laughs> what are you thinking? This is like Robert Durst with the Band-Aid under his nose. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just like, this is a good enough disguise. He just- shaved his eyebrows, put a band-aid <laughs> under his nose. Oh this my is, god. This is just like that. So are you looking, are you still looking at photos? I can yeah. be. Alright, go no. back to the photos. These will all be on the blog. Alright, so <laughs> in, 20, <laughs> in 2012, a spate of bank robberies in Washington State had police searching for a suspect whose disguise was simply a <laughs> Thick piece of black duct tape <laughs> over his nose and upper lip. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What this guy the is fuck? crushing the game. Like he oh. is a criminal mastermind. Oh he my just God. he ran out of Biore pour strips and wanted to multitask. <laughs> it's a it's a charcoal mask. It looks like a Biore pore strip. It looks like Have you exactly guys seen like that one. video? Have you seen the video of that woman who did the charcoal mask <laughs> yeah. and like let it sit Peeling too long off. and she's trying oh, to get it off? Screaming. Oh my god, it's so sad. <laughs> so I fucking think, no, funny. It's hilarious. I've been terrified to do one because of that video. I've never done one. Yeah, no way. Never. Nothing my friend I Deb swears by with it. warm water. I do love those like Korean sheet masks though, and I have put them on in public. I have put them yeah. on, on airplanes before and just been like, what? Um, you yeah. look like Hannibal Lecter wearing some <laughs> sort of face face. It's not face, good. Face face. I don't care. Anyway. Oh, my God. <laughs> then I get the middle seat free. It's great. Uh, <laughs> oh Kenyon's main God. purpose in life is freaking the shit out of everyone around her so they just leave her alone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I can I for so many years I was just harassed by strangers for directions to places because I have like a you know round face and blonde hair and people think that I'm a nice person just by looking at me and you got to prove them not. wrong put them in their place yeah I'm not <laughs> I'm not a good person and I, I just don't hate- know how to direct you anywhere yeah, you barely know left and right. Mm-hmm. You can't read an analog clock. It's troublesome. <laughs> no one should be asking <laughs> you for anything. Yeah. I just turn and hiss at people now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, hold on. I've got one more duct tape bandit copycat. Oh, my God, please <laughs> hit me with it. Okay, so in the winter of 2014, a man in Burlington, Vermont, held up a deli mart 
And he was caught on surveillance footage, stopping in the parking lot beforehand and tearing off several pieces of duct tape from a roll that he had brought <laughs> and placing them <laughs> haphazardly over his face. <laughs> and then, I love the duct tape theory. Uh, like, <laughs> it's then, not a theory, it's just a... It's a, what it's the a fuck? strategy. Strategy, yeah. that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> to insinuate to the store clerk that he had a weapon on him which was likely the duct tape in his pocket. <laughs> the roll of duct tape. Uh, yeah. Or he was happy to see them. But, it's a very um, blunt gun you've got. Is that a roll of duct got. tape in your pocket? Or yeah. happy to see it? <laughs> so, and he got away as far as we know. So number three, number two and three might have gotten away with it. So maybe it's not so terrible. I just got oh it. I don't, think, I don't think number two did, because there's surveillance cam footage of him, okay. and you could easily identify that man. Yeah. I feel like I recognize that guy. Yeah. Right. Fiore poor strip is not getting away I'm with I'm pretty it. sure there's I no went way. to college with that kid. I'm pretty sure you <laughs> went to college with him, too. Yeah. He looks super <laughs> yeah. preppy, northeast. Yeah. He kind of looks like Back Kyle. home. He has a Vineyard Vines belt for show. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but yes. Yeah. There are embroidered whales in his closet. Ooh. Yeah. Oh my god. Ah. A <laughs> lot of guys playing polo embroidered. Yeah. yeah. Man owns a lot of pastel shorts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah. All right. That's what I got. I love oh my it. god. Excellent. Well, I am taking three shallow dra- dives into three very different cases. Excellent. But they are equally ridiculous. <laughs> We're going to go in chronological order. We're going to start in 2008 with Ruben Zarate. Zarate. He was 18 years old, so you know he's just an idiot because he's yeah. a teenage boy, so this yeah. is not starting well. Uh-huh. And he went to rob a muffler shop near his home in Chicago. <laughs> he enters the store with a gun and rob demands money. Rob a muffler shop? Jesus. Hey, anywhere with a cash drawer. Why oh. not? Okay, all right. He enters the store with a gun and demanded money from a mechanic working the front desk of the shop. It's a pretty cut and dry holdup, but there's a big issue. There's very little cash in the register, probably Mm -hmm. for this very reason. Mm -hmm. And instead, the cash was all in a safe in the back office. And only the manager could get into the safe. But guess what? The manager is out to lunch. (laughs) I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll (laughs) wait. (laughs) Oh, no. No, no, no. Ruben did not wait. Oh, okay. He decided it would be best to return when the manager gets back. But not wanting (laughs) to make a wasted trip... He left his cell phone number with the cashier no. and asked that they give him a call when the manager returns. Are you no. fucking kidding me? He said, quote, you guys better call me because otherwise I'm going to come back to shoot you, according to employee Jose Sita. Oh, okay. So Jose calls the police after Ruben leaves <laughs> and the cops come and they're like, okay, go ahead and call him. So they call <laughs> Ruben back. <laughs> I guess just call him. Call him. <laughs> let him know that the manager had returned and was there to let him into the safe. Oh my Ruben god. Ruben comes back to the muffler shop. <laughs> oh my god. Only to be greeted by police. And this part's kind of a bummer because he was scared and he's an idiot, so he pulled his gun on the cops. Oh, oh Jesus but Christ. But the cops the cops shot him in the leg and he was apprehended and treated for his injuries before being charged with attempted armed robbery and aggravated assault of a police officer. Oh, so he got arrested. Oh my god. Oh my and god. He went to the big house. The big house. The big house. I love it. This next robbery <sighs> also involved a stupid phone call. This happened in twenty ten. <laughs> Albert <laughs> Bailey and an unnamed juvenile sidekick decided they wanted to rob a bank in Fairfield, Connecticut. In order to streamline the process and get in and out ASAP, they had the brilliant idea to call ahead and make their demand for $100,000. And then they, they, expected, <laughs> they expected it to be waiting for them when they arrived. <laughs> Quote, I've heard of drive-up robberies where they rob the bank via drive-up windows, said Detective Lieutenant Michael Gagner of the Fairfield, Connecticut Police Department. But I've never had somebody call ahead and say, get the money, we're coming. (laughs) 
pre. I wanna, it's like a. I want It's like a takeout. My Seriously. <laughs> it's a takeout minutes, order. Minutes after the phone call, Bailey sent in. It gets so much better. Bailey sent in his juvenile accomplice along with a note demanding the aforementioned $100,000. <laughs> Meanwhile, a bank employee has been on the phone with police the entire time and is giving them an, a real-time play-by-play of everything that's happening. <laughs> the young suspect settled for $99,100 less than what was demanded and left <laughs> the bank with $900. <laughs> I mean, all right. The suspect left the bank and encountered a police officer who ordered him to stop. The suspect then tried to run to the car where the other, (laughs) where Alan was waiting to drive off. Both were arrested without incident. It came out later that the robbers had also insisted that the money waiting for them not be put in a dye pack. Uh But their wishes were not followed and a bag of cash exploded in dye when the young boy (laughs) threw it on the ground. (laughs) The cop, the cop literally said, is quoted in the news, quote, we were all kind of cracking up with the call ahead aspect of it. Definitely unusual technique. Oh my. And can you not put it in a dye pack? That'd be great. I love, I love that they're trying to run and they ditch the dye bag and it just pops all over them. Like this couldn't have gone worse for these two guys. Oh my God. Um, Did they ask for, like, ketchup and forks on their way out, too? (laughs) Any other requests? Yeah. Oh, my God. When we lived in Jersey City, uh, Hurricane... What was the the big hurricane on the East Coast a few years ago? The big Eh, one. Who cares? Oh, yeah. My parents were were without power for a while. Yeah. It wasn't Katrina. We can narrow it down from there. It was not Katrina. (laughs) No, but it was, it it was like Gale or something. It fucked up the East Coast. But anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Cheryl. So there was like a curfew and whatever, but the neighborhood that uh, Zach was living in at the time was on these cliffs, so there was no flooding in his neighborhood. So people, like teenagers and stuff were just kind of like running amok and like staying out after curfew and all this Mm -hmm. stuff, and there was no power. Anarchy! Yeah. So a bunch of teenagers tried to blow up the ATM in front of the bodega oh, on the corner course. with TNT, which is like, <laughs> where did they get the TNT? Because that's oh, Jesus. the actual troubling aspect of this. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's New Jersey. Yeah. But it obviously, like, they thought that money was just going to explode out of this right. ATM machine and, <laughs> and like, rain from the skies. Nope. But and not be incinerated. Yeah, the whole thing just, like, melted and into, yep. like, one big crumpled plastic mass. Yep. <laughs> That'll happen. <laughs> oh okay, God. this is my last one, and it's my personal favorite. Oh, yes. So, as you know, one of the most essential items in a successful robbery is the getaway vehicle. Oh, God. (laughs) And a band of Colombian thieves learned this the hard way when they attempted to rob a grocery store in the tiny town of Juan de Acosta in 2013. The thieves' crime spree began when they stole Zavi, a 10-year-old donkey from a small farm, (laughs) with the plan of using it as their getaway car. I love that they have the donkey's name. Oh, Zavi is a hero. And you you are about to find out why. They broke into the grocery store around 2 a.m. and stole rum, oil, rice, and cans of tuna and sardines, Loading up poor Zavi with their stolen wares. Zavi's just but Zavi, chewing. Zavi was not having it. <laughs> He's like, I'm ten. I am exhausted. What the fuck? My feet. So I'm ten. He began to let out a series of loud brays, which drew the attention of police. <laughs> I'm braying. <laughs> I'm braying. <laughs> Forced to attempt their getaway on foot, they abandoned the donkey still packed up with their stolen items and took off, but alas, were caught by the cops. Weird. The police found Zavi roaming near the grocery store, like still with this pack of stolen goods. <laughs> his back. And the donkey hero was held at the town police station until his owner could be located. Oh, so a happy ending for all. <laughs> 
mascot. There's a picture of Zabi on the drive. Oh my god. Thank god. Look how old and decrepit that donkey is. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Well, that's not that's not Zabi like with the stolen goods. That's just like Zabi working. Oh, that's just Zabi. Yeah. Oh my god. No wonder Zabi was too tired. Look at that. Zabi's like, fuck this. He didn't ask for that. (laughs) The getaway donkey. He's uh, also about to twist his ankle stepping over that curb. He's about to right? die. He's a 10-year-old yeah. working donkey. How long do donkeys normally live? I don't know. I don't know. I'm Googling <laughs> it. I don't know, but he is, he is up there. He doesn't look good. Zavi has seen better days. <laughs> so oh that is my story. Um, I just it. Googled it. Donkeys normally live between 25 and 30 years. What? Holy shit. Shit. So Zavi was, Zavi was just a teenager, basically. Good. He looks road hard and put away wet. Maybe that's an older photo, like a yeah. Maybe that's like Zavi more like now than 2013. But somebody somebody followed up with this case to take a, Maybe. To take a, a more recent pic of Zavi. Yeah, we must you're find right. Zavi. You're right. That's 2017 Hi. Zavi. <laughs> We need like a forensic artist Crazier sketch things of have aged, duct tape aged zombies. What zombie would look like today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I oh love zombie. God. You're all zombie. assholes. Oh. All right. <laughs> all right. So uh, I hear that Lucy has a joke for us this week. Yes. I have a joke. I have a joke to round it out. Right. Okay. <laughs> we definitely kept it lighter this week than stuff. Thank God. Uh, we needed so it. Lighter than literally any other episode I think yeah. we've mm-hmm. done, so this was good. Okay. <clears throat> While on patrol, I arrested a burglar who had injured himself running from a home. He told me he'd broken in and unhooked the phone before searching for valuables but he'd panicked when he heard a woman's voice. I entered the house and heard the same voice. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try your call again. (laughs) That is so dumb. I know. (laughs) I don't even know if it's a joke. I think it's a true story because it's from the same Reader's Digest listicles. Oh my god. Oh my god. Perfect. All right. Well, that was magical. <laughs> Special thanks to Reader's Digest. Yep, for uh, sure. For and to Zobby. All of to my Zobby, information. the 10-year-old <laughs> don't-give-a-fuck donkey. The pre-teen yeah. donkey. Temperamental. I love uh, him. I, I feel you, Zavi. Um, <laughs> all right. Also, special thanks this week to Nikki Zarnecki. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Jamie Trent DeMilt. Woo! I think mean, people are Jamie. fucking with me with these names. because No, I think all of these people are just like characters in no. Monopoly or something. <laughs> You're just that bad at pronouncing last oh, names. Okay. <laughs> Gabrielle Russo. Nailed you it. You got that one. <laughs> this one. This one's pretty hard to fuck up. Jill. <laughs> <laughs> just Buffalo Jill. Jill. Buffalo Jill. Thanks, Jill. Buffalo Jill. Uh, oh, my God. Beth Alcock, which we're not going to make fun of you for your name. I'm sure you've gotten it before. <laughs> your uh, merch is on the way. Yep. Woo! Karen, <laughs> Karen Carlson and... Oh, Karen? sorry, sorry, sorry. Karen Carlson Roth and mm-hmm. Shannon mm-hmm. Tolefson. So those last Yay. two have Woo! donated at the $10 a month level, so they will be getting a free fucking patriarchy wine glass in the mail. Hell pretty, yeah. Pretty darn soon. Pretty um, darn soon. And uh, one last special thanks this week is to the Unconcluded podcast. Um, so that is a po- it's a pretty new podcast. They have like, you know, six episodes out. Um and it's an investigative podcast looking into the disappearance of a uh, 24-year-old Jennifer Kessie. Mm-hmm. Um, and they reached out to me on Twitter asking if I 
could uh, talk to them in a bonus episode about uh, human trafficking and how uh, it might relate to Jennifer's disappearance. Mm-hmm. And so I did that. So there, there's an episode with me guesting on it. So if you uh, miss these dulcet tones... Um, and you want to hear me sound you know attempting to sound serious and not drunk then check out unconcluded um it's a really great fresh experience for everyone yeah probably the only time you'll ever hear her that way it's rare (laughs) professional Um, knowledgeable sober (laughs) <laughs> if we were a news network, that would not be our yes. tagline. <laughs> well, it'd be like Fox News, fair and balanced. Yeah. Wine and Fox crime. And professional, professional, knowledgeable, sober. sober. <laughs> <laughs> all Nailed right. it. That's all we got for you this week. It's a short episode this week. We wanted to keep it light, a little palate cleanser from uh, the... Sad- our previous... 19 yeah. episodes. Yeah. But don't worry. We'll ruin your lives next week. Yeah. We yeah. always yeah. do. We'll be back to the normal <laughs> sketch next week. So we love you all. Thank you for listening. See you Bye-bye. next week. We love you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kali Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Sound mixing by Dan Larson. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wine and Crime Pod. If you have wine recommendations or creepy true crime stories to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. All Wine and Crime episodes are available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play, plus a number of other podcasting apps. If we're not on your preferred app yet, let us know and we'll work to make sure you get your Wine and Crime fix ASAP. Most importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. It really is the best way to spread the word. Support for Wine and Crime comes from us. At the moment, we're footing most of the bill, but we ain't too proud to beg, so we're also on Patreon. If you'd like to support us and get a shout-out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. (laughs) 